Greetings, hacksters! Excited to be back in the studio with another tech highlight. It's been a while, uh, but I've got some very exciting stuff for here today. We've got these three hackster edu kits, which have been put together by our team along with DF Robot, and there's three of them. So the first one is getting started with AI, and then we have getting started with IoT, and getting started with environmental sensing. And we're going to take a look at what's inside each of those, along with all the product pages and stuff like that, unique features of each one, which there's some stuff I'm really excited about, like the Husky lens, a really cool piece of technology from DF Robot, and a bunch of stuff from the Gravity series, which is sort of their answer to Grove or uh, Stemma or Quick modules, uh, that type of thing. So uh, as always, check out the links in the description if there's more you'd like to follow up on. If you like stuff like this, be sure to subscribe and <laughs> let's just jump into it. Okay, so um, first up, let's take a look at, uh, oh, I've got, I was digging into this uh, board that's uh, sort of part of the backbone of these kits is this Fire Beetle board, the Fire Beetle ESP32-E, which is specifically designed for IoT. And you can find uh, the information for that one in the description. But we've got this board overview. We've got USB Type-C. You've got a, a built-in charger for LiPo batteries, which I always love. I love being able to just... Um, plug something in and charge the batteries off of it. Not all things do that. So the micro bit and some Adafruit boards don't include that because uh, you know, maybe you want to to power them with non-rechargeable batteries, in which case that's a hazard. But in this case, yes, you can just plug in a LiPo battery and it's beautiful and it'll charge. It's all good. Uh, you've also got a few user controllable options built in. You've got an LED on pin D9 or pin 2. Uh, you've got a button that you can program and you've also got a an RGB LED on there. So uh, low power mode, all this good stuff. And of course, an ESP32, which provides Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And uh, yeah, this thing is programmable in Arduino right now. They are looking at providing advanced support for MicroPython. Uh, I think that one seems to be the closest to being supported. They're also talking about Scratch, uh, Make Code, Mind Plus, Ping Pong, um, etc. And then uh, we've also got some castellated edges on here in case, you know, these, these boards are designed for, these kits are designed for getting started in each of these fields. So we don't expect you to have a lot of skills already around building stuff with electronics. But if you wanted to, because this board has castellated edges, you can uh, embed it on top of your own PCB there, which is pretty cool. Let's move on. We've got uh, the Gravity series from... DF Robot, which includes all kinds of different peripherals. You got projects there, exploring gravity. You can just dig through all their materials here. Really interesting stuff about uh, sensor selection guides. So there's different heart rate sensors, uh, CO2 sensor selection guide, uh, selection guide for gesture recognition sensors, all these different things that you can hook up under this gravity system. And you can look up a bunch of the different modules that are available here. So both of those are available from the main gravity page. Just click on exploring gravity to find all the different things or on the projects link to find all this cool stuff. So those are two sort of things that are at central to each of these kits all together. So on Hackster, you can find each of these kits separately. We've got getting started with AI. And let's go ahead and open that up. I'm really excited about this one because it features a board that I've gotten very into in the past. I did an, an unboxing for it, actually. The Husky Lens AI algorithms in the palm of your hand. So we'll have a look at that. Getting started with AI, powered by DF Robot. On each of these kits, you've got a uh, table of contents, parts list, bill of materials, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we've got a Fire Beetle ESP32-E IoT microcontroller with a header, uh, Gravity IO Shield for Fire Beetle 2. Uh, that helps you have uh, a breakout to, uh, to attach different things, obviously. We've got the Husky Lens. Let's just get this open. <laughs> I'm so impatient. But look at these things. They're so cute. OK, cuteness uh, besides the point. We've got the Husky Lens here. 
This uh, is actually larger than life size on here. It kind of gives you a mistaken idea of just how compact and useful this thing is. Although you can see some of the features a little bit more easily, but we'll open this up and give it a look. As I mentioned, I have done a whole unboxing on this before. Do -do 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 -do. But we're going to take a look. I'm so excited. Dun, da -da -dun, da -da -dun. We've got bubble packaging, so it's extra protected in here. And here, oh, it's smaller. Is it smaller or am I just not used to how small it is? And it seems like a wondrous thing every time. So we've got this uh, both scroll wheel and little clicky thing here which helps you select the different uh, algorithms that you can use that are built in on this board. It comes with a bunch of different algorithms installed for like object detection, face tracking, and things like that. You can enable and disable them. You've got a, a breakout here, a couple of different breakouts. Here's the camera. So this is sort of like the side of the board that faces whatever you're looking at. And then uh, this is the side that the operator looks at with a little screen on it and you navigate using this little scrolly touchy button thing. Um, a really cool little low poly logo and a button. And plus, you know, flash LEDs to illuminate the subject. You've got micro USB on here. And there are a bunch of projects already featuring this board uh, on DF Robot. Let me fix my focus here so that we can get a closer look now that we've got this open. One moment, please. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Okay, yeah, so you can see all these features that we've got. And this can be controlled in a number of different ways, but yeah, check out the links in the description for more information on that, and we'll be coming out with some more cool tutorials there. What else have we got? We've got a speaker, and this goes hand in hand with another piece of this kit, which is common to, I believe, all of the kits. We've got the DF Player Pro. So this is something that allows you to <laughs> include audio notifications in your project. So it's not just like a piezo buzzer. It's much more complex than that. You can actually put like audio files in here so you can have it alert you if it sees your cousin Jacob coming up the sidewalk and it's like, no, <laughs> or hooray. I don't know. Maybe you like cousin Jacob. I don't have a cousin Jacob. I just made that up. But um, you know, you can have personalized alerts for different use cases is what I'm trying to get at here. Um, you've got USB-C on here. This is a super cool little device. Let's open it up. This is such a satisfying part of the process. They're just like candy. Come here. And you've got headers in the package as well. All right, here we go. A little DF Player Pro. There's a DF Mini as well. That's sort of another project that product that DF Robot makes that I really like. I haven't used this one, but it has a lot of promise. So then you also have a really beefy speaker going along with this. I hadn't realized from the kit pictures just how big this is, but it's a very uh, effective looking speaker. We've got some hookup wires. We've got a relay module. This is another one that I believe in is, is in all the kits, but we'll double check that. For connect for I think this goes up to 10 amps. Let's just double check my info here. So Going through these in turn, we've got the getting started with AI kit. There's one page on DF Robots uh, site on their wiki that covers all three of these kits. And you can just use the nav here to swap between them. There's a general overview. Then we've got AI, yeah, 10 amp relay module. So you can switch some pretty hefty stuff with this um, based on stuff that your Husky lens detects. Let's get back to the unboxing part. Two more things in here. We've got the Fire Beetle board that we talked about a moment ago. We've got headers and the board itself. I haven't actually looked at one of these in person before, so I'm gonna try and open this on the side. Mm. 
Very cool. Okay, so this comes with headers installed already, actually. That's funny. And it has headers as well. But these are the sort of double height ones. Uh, so if you want to put an expansion board on top, which I'm guessing is what we've got here, Fire Beetle Gravity IO. Yes. Okay. So this comes with headers on it as well. But check it out. If you wanted to mount something else on top, you've got these double height headers, which allow you to put them through another board have a female connector on top of the board and have a male connector on the bottom of the board. So this is really useful for expansion shields and stuff like that, where you want to be able to plug stuff in with uh, hookup wires as well as like, such as these, for example. Oh, these are female to female, uh, but very handy for being able to both prototype flexibly so you can plug stuff in as you desire, as well as mounting an entire board on top. So very cool. Uh, here's that LiPo connector. Here's our little switch. <laughs> Interesting 90 degree mounted buttons here. Check that out. And then we've got our USB-C. You've got your charging indicator. You've got your RGB LED, your programmable LED, and your button. And then our ESP32. Okay, let's put all this back in the box. <laughs> I'll pretend that this never happened. Because we got to make way for another one. I'm going to set this aside because I'm definitely going to be playing with this a little bit after the fact. Don't tell. And I'll keep this out as well. I'm just going to set these actual electronic bits aside. But we do need to make space for more stuff. Ooh, and in the digital relay module, we also had a little gravity adapter cable. So this is, I think, gravity to I squared C. Hmm. Find out. So that was the AI getting started kit. Now we have the IoT kit. This one involves some sensors and also some physical inputs, so separate buttons and things. Uh, the focus is a little blurry here, but that's because we're going to show some more close-ups. So we've got a PIR motion sensor, so digital passive infrared motion sensor. You know these. They're the ones that have the little plastic dome on them, and it can basically tell if stuff's moving around in front of it. Um, passive infrared sensor. Yeah. Good for home automation. I tied to this, uh, my post about this with home automation, because a lot of this stuff is very applicable for people who want to make smart homes, uh, especially this IOT one. So we've got some more female to female wires, LED button, RTC module. I'll just, I'll just show you these. This is another speaker and it comes with another DF player pro module. So just so we know that. Then also we've got an RTC module, so a real-time clock. Also very useful for smart home stuff. If you don't want your automations to drift over time between days, we've got cables for that. And uh, you can program that to make sure that your stuff stays on schedule. You don't have to like approximate with Arduino loops, which I've definitely been guilty of from time to time in different projects. So we have two LED buttons here. They're buttons with a white LED and a yellow LED. So illuminated buttons, find your stuff in the dark. You can put it next to your bed and hit the button when you wake up in the night. And then it'll tell you your sleep quality or, I don't know, hit the button in the morning when your cat jumps on you and demands to be fed. <laughs> All kinds of stuff you could do with that. Internet of Things. We've got the DF Layer Pro that goes with that speaker, as mentioned. We've got the Fire Beetle that we already took a look at. Again, look in the description for a link to uh, all the stuff that's going to be in the kit. We've got another digital relay model, 10 amps, as mentioned before. We've got an ultrasonic sensor, so a distance sensor here. Have stuff turn on or wake up once you come within range. You could have, again, you could have it be like a, <laughs> you could use this in conjunction with the uh, AI kit if you wanted to um, detect when someone's approaching your doorway and then turn on the Husky lens to see who it is. Uh, but yeah, if you want to know when your package is going to be delivered or uh, you know any number of things like that have stuff turn on only when people are in proximity, have your kitchen lights turn on when people enter. 
detect your cat coming to jump on you in the morning so you can hit the feed button and intercept them. We've got an I squared C, gravity R squared C interface expansion board. So a bunch of little I squared C breakouts here and it hooks into the gravity system. Let's just show that really quick. So we've got SDA, SCL, ground, and voltage. Really beautiful design on these things with these uh, mounting holes, this sort of like textured, matte slash glossy texture on here. Uh, your colored headers that make it very clear uh, which way you're plugging stuff in, love that. And then your little gravity connector over there. So it's a breakout for I squared C stuff. And of course you have cables in the box. Then we've got Fire Beetle Gravity IO. So this is a shield that goes on top of the Fire Beetle board. And you've got a couple screw terminals. And a whole bunch of breakouts here. We've got analog, digital, UART, uh, I squared C, SPY, uh, all these different breakouts on here, plus a uh, voltage and ground little screw terminal on there. Good stuff. Okay, so that's two out of three. We've done the AI kit, we've done the IoT kit. The one we have left is the environmental sensing kit, and that's gonna have some really cool sensors in it. Uh, again, as always, check out the links in the description. I know you may be tired of me saying that, but for anyone who's just joining us partway through, you know, there's, there's links in the description. If you see anything here and you get really excited and you wanna learn more, or you're just like, what is she talking about? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so environmental sensing kit. I love the design on these. Uh, again, we've got the table of contents, <laughs> parts list on the outside here. A lot of really interesting sensors, air quality, another one of those I square seed hubs. This is a soil moisture sensor, a giant capacitive soil moisture sensor. I didn't realize this was this big. But you can stick it into a mega house plant, any kind of house plant uh, that you have to make sure that it's getting the amount of uh, moisture that it needs. Could be an outdoor plant too as well, I guess. So we've got uh, getting started with IoT kit, getting started with environmental sensing kit. And so let's see, <laughs> here we go. Gravity analog waterproof capacitive soil moisture sensor. So the part on the top of here is waterproof. You don't have to worry about it being outside. And uh, it's got a long cable going to it. So you can have this mounted, you know, the kit mounted in a protected place on the side of your house or something like that, uh, far away from your sprayers or your watering cans and have this plugged into your uh, plant. Oh, look at that. You've got a little, uh, little measuring ruler thingy in centimeters on that. That's very cool. Technically millimeters because it's 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. And then they say recommended depth, all this different good stuff. Uh, warning line. <laughs> yeah, really cool sensor there. Very beefy. Let's continue. Uh, we've got a couple more of those buttons. So it's sort of, uh, it overlaps a bit with the IoT kit. And as with the AI kit, we've still got that relay. Let's dig in a little further. Oh. So Fire Beetle uh, Gravity IO Breakout. We looked at that in the last kit. It looks like this. It's got all the different protocols on it. You got I squared C, SPY, um, UART, etc. We've got a an I squared C interface expansion board that we looked at before as well. That's just a bunch of I squared C breakouts in a row uh, that attaches via gravity. We've got an LED button that's yellow. We've got an LED button that's white. Little light up buttons, very beautiful. We've got an air quality sensor. I'm really excited about this one for either indoor or outdoor projects. So I live in California, <laughs> it is very interesting around July and August when we get our wildfire season and being able to tell what the air quality is both inside and outside is of great interest to me. 
So we've got this air quality sensor here. And let's have a look at what all is included in this because you know sometimes it's more about carbon, sometimes it's more about volatile organic compounds and things like that. Let's have a look. SGP40 air quality sensor. VOC sensor chip launched by the well-known Sensirion based on CMO Sense technology, a complete sensor system on a single chip, temperature controlled micro hot plate and a humidity compensated indoor air quality signal. Okay, so mostly for indoor stuff. Low power, fast response and a small body. This is a very small sensor. Um, very suitable for indoor projects that will be used for a long time, such as refitting air purifiers, kitchen hoods, etc. cetera. Uh, provided with C and Python libraries for using with different main controllers. VOC index is obtained by converting the detected ethanol equivalent in air. Cool. Look at this. Three sensor modules with different histories converge after a few hours. So uh, these three sensors were started in different environments at different times, uh, in typical air and polluted air. And then they are brought into the same environment and they start to uh, converge. Very cool. So consistency and accuracy, very important. Okay, let's see what else we've got in here. You go back in there. I'm getting better about organizing these as I put them away as I go through the video. <laughs> I'm gonna have to reorg after this. So we've got the fire beetle board, ESP32. We looked at that already. We've got a multifunctional environmental sensor. And what's this guy? Did we already look at this? This is our relay module. Uh, again, 10 amp relay module. I'm going to uh, put all this stuff back. And we're going to dive in to this multifunctional environmental sensor. Let's get it out of the box. Got your little headers in there. Zoop. <laughs> they really are like little candy wrappers. Okay, check this out. So we've got temperature and humidity uh, as shown by this little icon on here. And that is broken out from the rest of the PCB so that it's not, uh, especially the temperature isn't affected by other stuff that's sort of heating up the board. Um, really interesting light sensor presumably going on here. Let's take a look at the documentation. Do, 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 do. Multifunction environmental sensor from Fermion. Comprises SHTC3 temperature and humidity sensor, BMP280 atmospheric pressure sensor, a VEML7700 light sensor, and an LTR390 ultraviolet sensor uh, into one and offers five kinds of environmental parameters. Professional sensor chip is selected for each type of parameter measurement. Reasonable layout and heat conduction of the main chip are carefully considered in the circuit design, which effectively guarantees the accuracy of the data. So there's a chip on board that processes the raw data so that it's easier for, use, for you to use. <laughs> uh, you can, uh, it normalizes it to Celsius and Fahrenheit. You've got humidity percentage. Kilopascals for atmospheric pressure, etc. <laughs> Supports two communication methods, UART and I2C. And uh, yeah, all kinds of cool stuff. I'm kind of curious about, oh, here we go, yes. The ultraviolet sensor. Just, ah, uh, okay, cool, yeah. You could see um, how much ultraviolet light is, uh, what the UV index is, basically, so that you know how much uh, sunscreen to put on or clothing to shield yourself from the sun, especially if you're working by a window or whatever. Very cool. What else have we got? Our ambient light sensor. So you can tell if it's day or night or whatever. All kinds of different uses for that. And then, of course, you've got super up close uh, diagram. And then you've got these pinouts and connection examples. How to do it for UART and how to do it for I2C. Very cool. So DF Robots Wiki is very comprehensive. And for each of these things that's included in the kit, you'll have a very good chance of being able to find examples, uh, example code in different languages, uh, how to wire different, uh, each one different ways to hook it up to your circuit. So for example, down here, 
love all these diagrams. Uh, my brain runs on diagrams. It's beautiful. So each one of these things, not only is there a page for the kit, but you can easily uh, link through to their own dedicated wiki page, plus sometimes some actual projects that are already uh, have already been built with each of these components. So the buttons are a little are pr pretty straightforward. You've got a really module, also pretty straightforward, but you know sometimes those can be a little confusing. The air quality sensor, all this good stuff. All right, I know that I missed some of the stuff that I was going to show you earlier for specific kits. So let's see if we can catch up there. Ah, oh, the Husky Lens. So we've got the Husky Lens main page. We've got our unboxing, which I believe I've linked below in the description as well. We've got um, the Husky Lens AI camera page on Hackster. So there's already some projects that people have posted with this. Lots of cool stuff. DIY line tracking robot. That's one of the uh, pretty easy projects to do with the Husky Lens. And the DF Player Pro. Then we had the IoT kit, which didn't really have much that was separate from the other kits. Uh, we had our buttons and things and our PIR sensor. And then the environmental sensing kit. We already went through most of that. OK, cool. So those are our new edu kits. If you want to learn more about these, just check um, edu, E-E-D-U, on Hackster. You can find all three of these in the search results and find much more information on the DF robot pages. Uh, I'm so excited to bring these to you, uh, be the one to break the news. We are planning a few activities with these coming up, so keep an eye on contests, keep an eye on other events and things. Uh, we do have hackster.io slash events. If you're not already hooked into that information source, you should be because there's a lot of cool stuff. We cover our own events, but also lots of different ones from the community all around the world, physical and digital events, and then also keep an eye on our contest page if you want to uh, learn more about where to get hold of these edu kits. And also watch our blog, hackster.i slash news, for other information on these as it comes out. But I wanted to give you a quick unboxing uh, because these are just, it's like we've done uh, partial kits before, but they've never really gone very far. So after being at this company for about nine years now, eight or nine years, uh, it's like, it's finally happening. So I'm very excited to, to bring this out to you. DF Robot offers the widest range of electrochemical sensors I ever saw as a ready to go module. I was noticing as uh, I was scrolling through the DF Robot page, which one was it? The gravity page. Um, all these different articles on how to choose a CO2 sensor, how to choose a gesture recognition sensor and things like that. Like there's not just one, like, let's see. Yeah, you've got multiple different gravity uh, system series CO2 sensors and they help you decide which one to pick. It's just incredible. And each one of these is, going to have its own wiki page that tells you a bunch about it if you want to go in even deeper to make sure that you're picking the right one. But I think that it helps people figure out where to best spend their money, where to put their, you know, we all have limited time in which to learn new things. And so the more that you can do ahead of time to figure out which one exactly is perfect for your application, the better it's going to be. So yeah, Arthur, thanks for chipping in there. Uh, Tariq, thank you. I'm very well. Uh, I'm excited to be bringing you a new tech highlight. Uh, and with that, I believe it is our time to wrap up. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. I don't care if it's not the weekend for you when you're watching this. <laughs> uh, check out our Edo kits. I have to give massive props to Ginger of our team for making sure that these came to life uh, in collaboration with DF Robot. Ginger is an amazing person, and you may also see her out at some Hackster events, uh, and she handles our contests too. So uh, stay tuned, watch our contest page, watch our events page, and watch our blog. And of course, if you like this kind of thing, subscribe. I have to do jazz hands with that. <laughs> Hack on.